for our final lesson this season, Candy Cooper is back to give us a little preview from your book. Yeah, thanks Katie. Yeah, I wanted to show you how to make these special ribbon covered beads. So, so easy. They're so pretty, yeah. But they really are pretty and you can get a really unique surface on, um, with just using a few materials. Okay, and that bead that you're showing us is actually a wooden bead inside, right? Right, I'll hold up one next to it so you can see the before and the after. Perfect. <laughs> so let's get started covering some plain old wooden beads. Okay. These are actually, you can see in my little pile here, these are actually used for macrame and they come in all different shapes. There's barrel shape, round shape, big, small. You just wanna look for beads with a huge diameter because ribbon clumps up really fast. Oh right, and it's going to take up all that space inside the bead, huh? Right, and then um, today I'm using sari silk, but you could cut up silk scarves, whatever, but these come pre-cut like this, so they're ready to start wrapping. And I like the frayed edges too, that looks so Me nice. Too. Rustic chic. Right. Okay, sorry I just threw that on your floor, Katie. It's okay. <laughs> so then you're gonna grab a large eyed needle. Uh, I think these are used for um, tapestries or like rugs, finishing the ends of rugs off. And I'm just gonna grab a bead. Now you can use, we're covering these entirely, but if you look at the one I have finished right here, you can see that some of that um, wooden surface is showing through. And those are ones that I painted with alcohol ink. Oh, okay. And I just took my cotton with the alcohol ink and blobbed it and blotted it over the whole bead. And then it gives you a little bit of texture. Yeah, and I like sort of the peekaboo effect of having right. that where it separates there, it's right. really pretty. That was my first time doing that and I thought, why not? Hey, it worked out. Okay, so then we're going to just take this ribbon through the middle and then what you wanna kinda of do is position the ribbon so it's going to the outside but you wanna kinda of straighten it out because sometimes this ribbon is really wrinkly. Oh yeah. But you're leaving uh, like an inch tail. So you're just separating it to cover more surface of the bead? Right, and so you're just gonna keep wrapping around until okay. you cover the entire bead. And you can kind of twist it if you want. You know, you could loop other beads in here, like, you know, pony beads, that would be fun. Oh, sure. You could make these as crazy as you want. But you just keep going around and around. And... When you get to the end, I'm not trying to rush you to the end, but just asking, do you glue it down? I do, I use, um, well, it depends. If I'm just wearing it, and I know I'm not running a marathon in the necklace. I don't, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> but if I were going to sell this or give it as a gift or something like that, I would totally glue it down and make sure that this stuff isn't going anywhere. Okay. And you could also put a little bit of fabric glue there. Oh, that's a good idea too. Mm -hmm, so it doesn't slip like that. But now we have something like this and you can kind of arrange the, the wraps as you want. Then you're gonna trim it like so. And we have our first wrap bead. Great. Super pretty. Okay, now, like we said, you could put a little bit of glue down in there too to secure the ends. So I've got one ready here um, in my color palette that I wanna use. And I've gone ahead and threaded my needle with regular sewing thread. Sometimes, if you look at my work that I've spent, you know, a lot of time on, I'll take two colors. And like, if you look at these, I've used a copper and royal blue and I'll double them and that just adds oh, another layer yeah. and a little bit of metallic against your flat mat. It's all those details. Yeah and then maybe you already know this but to anchor a thread to um, fabric you're just going to take a couple of stitches and forward stitches and then don't look too close. Is this important to do it over the seam where the ribbons meet? It can be, anywhere. or you just want to anchor it anywhere, like okay. even anchor it inside, wherever you want. Okay. But because I um, am not too fussy about my stitches, I just find a spot kind of at the end, and then I trim my thing, because um, my tail. So now I am going to go down the seam, and I'm just going to do a loop stitch. And if you are a sewer or somebody who does embroidery, you're, I'm going to apologize now, <laughs> because sometimes I should just call these Frankenstein beads. No, I think it's great. It really goes with the feeling of the piece. Yeah, I mean, I just take, I just get the job done and I like, I like it. It's just kind of a playful look and I like the contrast against the beads. You yeah. know, for my designs, like I kind of like that primitive look. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Right, and so all you're going for here though is to stitch up 
each edge. And you would just keep do going that. And you can see how I'm just skimming the needle across the surface. Okay. And then you could pick up some beads and work those in like the ones I've done here. This looks great. So you could string them together or work them into another design. Yeah. And then just use thin cording with another large eyed needle to string your beads on. Okay. Piece of cake. This was fun. Thank Thanks. you so much, Candy. Thanks, Katie.